Okay, so we've now got our project set up. We've installed some dependencies in this one. We're gonna create a controller, create our first route, and just have a little think about what order we're gonna do things in and what would be the best way to do things in because we've got to consider the fact that although this is a microservice and this is what we're focused on, there is still an outside world, an outside application uh, in which we fit in. So the order which we do things can be quite important, but we'll talk more about that as we come on to it. Choose high definition for the best viewing experience and if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level, all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon and welcome. First off, let's go and actually create our controller. So down in source, SRC, you'll see you have a controller folder and there we're just going to create a new controller. Let's think about what we shall call this. So even though we are dealing with promotions, this is a promotions engine, I've decided to go with the name Products Controller. Um, I had a little dry run with this and the name will probably make more sense or the decision will make more sense as we uh, work further into this. So Products Controller. And that is in Source Controller products controller and just before I go any further actually what I'm going to decide to do is actually keep each lesson on separate branches so I'm on the main branch here uh, I'm just going to commit this so git add dot which is git add all and then we'll just commit this Okay, and then I'm going to create a branch called routes because in this one we're just going to set up our first endpoint and so this is just a habit which I've tried to get into, which I don't always adhere to, but what I'll try and do is keep each uh, video recording will have an accompanying um, branch. So you can just go to GitHub and pull that branch if you want for that particular video. Okay, so routing. If we were creating, say, something quite RESTful, REST API, we'd probably do something like this. For example, if we wanted to get all of the promotions, um, we weren't actually doing any kind of processing or anything. We were just hitting an endpoint and getting the data back. I might say something like this, promotions, and then using our attributes or annotations, we could create an endpoint like this. Products, and then uh, an ID. So the ID of the product, I'll show you how you can use that. And then promotions. So get me all of the promotions for a product with this ID. And then you can give the route a name. So we'll just call this promotions. And then the methods which are permissible for this endpoint. And so we'd probably just say, okay, only get requests are permissible. And so, yeah, if we were taking that kind of restful um, approach where we were just looking to hit an endpoint and get some resources back, this is the kind of thing that we would do. However, that's not the approach we're taking. What we're going to do is we want to hit an endpoint, uh, do some processing. Uh, we're actually going to do some filtering and modifying, and there's going to be quite a lot of programming involved in order to get the lowest price for a particular product. So for that, we'll do something a little bit different. So public function... And I'm just going to call this lowest price for lack of a better name, really. And then for our routing, so again, I'm going to go with products and then the ID of the product. And this time, I'm just going to say lowest hyphen price. The name of the route will be lowest price. And then methods, we're actually gonna post JSON in because even though we're only gonna use a few inputs, if you think about how these things can grow, for example, if we wanted to do a get request and we were using query parameters, you might start out with like a small handful of query parameters, but 
as your company grows, as you become partnered with more and more affiliates, there might be more and more filters and different kinds of promotions which you apply, which would mean you've got to apply more data to the decision making. And so you could end up with a massive uh, query parameter list which stretches from here to the other side of the country. So what we'll do is we're going to say from the outset this, that this is going to be a post endpoint and that we're going to post uh, JSON into this. Okay, and what we would like this to return will be a HTTP response. So what you're looking for is this Symphony Component HTTP Foundation response. And so before we go any further, and just in case you don't already know this, forgive me if you do, I'll show you how you can grab route parameters. So when we wrap these in parentheses here, this becomes a route parameter, which we can actually grab in our lowest price method here. So that's going to be an integer and we just use the same name as what we've used for the parameter and what we're going to do is we just dump this out so i can show you the next thing i'm going to do is start up a development server and i can do that using the symphony cli so symphony and then serve hyphen d means it'll give the terminal back to me and won't just leave it hanging okay great stuff so we now have a web server uh, which is listening at this address, so 127.0.001 colon 8000. So I'll keep a note of that address and then I'm going to go over and open Postman. So if you've not used Postman before, the address is at the top of the screen, very easy to install. Just going to start off with um, the basics, so don't be too intimidated by this if you've not used it before because it's such a simple tool to use. If you do get more into doing more complex stuff, then obviously I'll talk you through it in great detail. So here we are making a post request. Then what you do is you enter the URL. So let's just grab this and actually paste that in there. And this will go to products and then an ID and then lowest hyphen price. I'm going to set some headers, uh, which will be more about what kind of content our application can accept. So accept, and then application JSON, and then content type, again, application JSON. And then you click on this tab here, body, and in there you need to pick raw and then from this drop down here just pick JSON so it's already set to JSON and then what I'll do is I'll drop in uh, some JSON which I've already written okay so we have a quantity of five request location UK voucher code is this request date is this and we've also sent a product ID and so the thing we're looking out for here is this because this is what we'll be dumping out we've said that the route parameter we've set it to a value of one so hit send, ignore the fact that we've got a 500 internal server error. Anytime you dump anything out inside your Symfony application, you'll see this. What you need to do is, uh, under this response panel here, click on preview, because that's where you'll be able to see things best. And as you can see, we get the number one. If I was to change that to 22 and send it again, this time we get 22. And the reason for that is that we are dumping out our route parameter. So we've got our route set up that we want to use. Uh, we're using a route parameter in order to get a product ID, which will come in handy for when we go and query for that product in order to get the, the base price for it, etc. And we've said that we're going to use uh, only the post method because we're going to post JSON in because the list of um, field items which might be required in order to perform the filtering, to perform the modifying might grow quite large. Now let's think about what we talked about at the beginning, meaning the order that we're going to do things in. So you might have something like this and typically you might decide you're going to start with the domain. So you're going to start creating your uh, product entities or models or promotion entities and things like that and then working on the actual logic of how the lowest price could be arrived at that is one approach that is probably the most common approach however we're building a microservice so you need to keep in the back of your mind where you fit in in the outside world because there might be a wider application which is dependent on this service. There might be other parts of development of the application which might be dependent on this. 
And so I think it would be a good idea to give uh, those other parts of the application, those other services, something to play with, at least something which will return some data so that the other teams could actually continue doing their development. The DevOps engineers could actually start building out the network if they can actually hit the service and get some kind of response back. So we'll just put in a faked response. Well, it won't be a faked response. It'll be a real response with just some fake output fields. I've been in that position where I'm building something like this and I have actually started with the internals, with the uh, algorithm for sorting and filtering or doing whatever it needs to do. But you've had other teams um, like asking when will this be ready and there's nothing worse when you're trying to figure something out than being constantly um, badgered and asked when something's going to be ready when someone else can use something so a nice compromise is just to give the other team something to work with from the start so what we will do is we'll just return a json response so that is symphony component http foundation and this will work because it extends uh, response so return a new JSON response and then the thing that we need to return is the data and then a status code so the status code will just go with 200 the fields what I'm thinking we'll actually do is we'll return the fields which get posted in so if we go back to postman and we settled on these five fields here we this might change it might grow or uh, might get modified as we work through this but if we actually return the five fields, the same data which gets posted in, and all we're going to do is we're just going to add to this or modify it if we need to. And so for that reason, I think we could use a data transfer object where we get the fields posted in. We can deserialize it into an object, then do our filtering, our modifying, and then serialize it again with the new newly added fields or the modified fields and just send it back so i think that'll be a nice little strategy so quantity you don't think you need to see me type all of these out so i'll just speed forward a little bit so quantity request location voucher code request date and then product id and so we might as well make use of our route parameter there and we'll just say id so now let's go and uh, check this out in Postman. So this time, instead of getting this 500 response with the um, with the var dump, what we should see is those fields. So I'll send this off. Okay, and so we get it in this format. If you wanted to see it in uh, like nicer format, you have these options at the bottom here. If you click pretty, then it'll just uh, display it like that, which is much easier to read. So this is quite good. Now we have a service which can be reached by other services. We're sending back a response in the format, which is similar, if not the same, as what will actually uh, get sent back when we have a finished product. But it's all quite happy path. Uh, some things that you might want to consider is also giving the option of sending back um, an example error response so that the other teams working on their little parts can actually build in their own error handling as well. So let's have a go at doing something like that. One way that we can do this is to add a condition in here. So uh, anyone working on other services which are going to commun communicate with this can actually just send a header to our service like a force fail, just a particular key. And if that key is present, then instead of saying back this, sending back this 200 uh, happy path success response, we can actually send back a different response, an error response, and then they can build their error handling into their service also. So that's what we'll do. And we can grab headers like this. Uh, in fact, we'll need to get the request. So here where we're injecting the ID, we're also going to inject request, which will be Symphony Component HTTP Foundation. And then we're going to use this request to grab the header off that. So the order of these doesn't matter. These, this will still work just the same because uh, where we're saying ID here, it's just looking for the same word, ID. Okay, if request headers has so if this key is in the headers and like I say we'll just give it a name like force fail then we're going to return a new JSON response and we'll just say error 
and then just a message like promotions engine uh, failure message. And then for the actual status code, what we can do is uh, we can set the force fail value to an actual status code. So if they want to test like a 400, which will be an application error, then they can build their handling of that. But they must, might also want to test things like um, server errors, so a 500 status code. And so that's what we'll do for this one. Request headers. And this time we're saying get force fail. And just to illustrate how this will actually work in case none of that has been totally clear, we'll go back over to Postman and we're going to add an extra header here, which will be force fail. So we'll just make a little bit of space. So in these tabs here, this is where you add all your different bits. You can add query parameters, authorization stuff. It's where we did the body for the actual JSON. So on the headers tab, just going to add one called force fail and so like I say here is where we'll actually use a status code so first off we'll just go with a 400 and we'll send this off okay perfect so we get 400 which is uh, the status code which we wanted to send back and then we get promotions engine failure message so then if you want to like uh, build your service um, incorporate uh, server errors so then we can change this to 500 Okay, and then we get 500 internal server error. I'm just going to make a little tweak to this response here now because, like I say, we're going to be taking these initial values, but we're then going to actually add to them, maybe do some modifying. And so let's actually add onto these some of the fields which will get returned. So we'll say price 100. So that would be the original price of the product, then discounted price. And so we'll say 50, then we'll have a promotion ID, and then a promotion name. And so this is how we'll start. We'll start from the outside, from the response, and we'll work our way inwards, which is a bit different to probably the most typical way you'd work, where you start from the inside and work your way outwards with the most complex logic first, but at least... By doing it this way, we will always have a service which is reachable, which other services can communicate with. And then as we do work our way inwards uh, to the logic handling stuff, we'll then start to replace some of these values with the actual real ones. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon. And also, if you're interested in my full-length courses, then make sure you check out my site at garyclark.tech. I'll leave a link on the screen and in the description.